Hello. Ball Smasher is a song I wrote uh, recently, and I figured I would give like a little walkthrough of it here and just describe my process and break down the layers a little bit for anyone that might find that interesting. I think this is one of the best things I've ever written, um, or, or like certainly one of the most interesting if that's what you like. It's it's definitely the most unhinged thing I've ever written. Um, I do not think most people liked this. I released it a couple of months ago and it didn't get too much attention. Uh, but I'm going to break that anyway. Um, the stems are available for this online. On uh, If you go to vincentrubinetti.com slash stems slash ball smasher, you can see all the stems. If you want to... Uh, have sort of a, a coarser breakdown of, of all the stems, but I'm, I'm also going to go into the individual layers here as well, because even within each one of these stems is, um, you know, sometimes like multiple layers within that. So, and then uh, I also made this little fun visualization to go with it. If you go to just add slash viz to that and you can press play and um, I'm going to actually I don't want to give it away, but I'm going to mute it for now. But you can see this nice little visualization if you want to. Somehow the, the YouTube upload, when I uploaded this, um, the compression just absolutely destroyed it, and it looks terrible. But if you go here, you can at least see, like, theoretically a, uh, like a very high f refresh rate animation here that's synced to the music and reactive and things like that. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, uh, so here we are. Uh, first thing about this is um, I wasn't really constrained by anything. So that's that's why it's so unhinged. Like I just kind of didn't think too hard about it, honestly. It was very weird. Um, but the, the first thing that did come to mind was sort of this Tycho beat here with the drums and, and just the general, I think I tend to start with like the general feel and pace and tempo first. Um, so that's, this was sort of the first thing that came to my mind, just this little beat here. Literally just that, and I, I, I don't know how it came to me. Also the name Ball Smasher came to me instantly too, not, not exactly sure why. Um, but yeah, this was like the first thing, you know, usually I need something to sort of like latch on to, and in, in this case that was it. And then sort of following naturally from that is the the Tycho rims here. Now one thing I, I want to point out that I think is kind of interesting and I've never really done before is that um, hopefully you can kind of hear it that the it almost sounds like weirdly compressed uh, maybe someone would describe it as that. W what's going on there is I'm like chopping off the ends of the samples sort of, um, with a very sharp release. And I think what that does is it kind of gives it like a, a very sampled, you know, like a sampled as you would hear in like a hip hop track or something, or like any kind of like new jazz where they're taking samples directly from something else and they're sort of like chopping them up. It's got like a chopped feel basically. Um, but instead of doing that with like just regular one-shot samples. I'm doing it with the, all these sample libraries. So um, in this case, so like this one layer here, Tycho, is made up of, let's see, what do we got here? We got three different layers from, uh, this is Audio uh, Ollie, audio I think, um, Modern Percussion. So like this sound, there's a couple of different things here. So you can kind of hear that's getting chopped off a little bit. I mean, you can definitely hear it with that. Um, for this one, I think I may have gone in and edited. Maybe not. No, okay, in, in this case, I think I did this via an effect. And excuse me here if I mess up because uh, I'm used to having two monitors and I'm trying to like do this all in one monitor to to record all on the same screen. 
yeah, so this is like staying on top. But you see this little cutoff here. So this anything below that threshold there gets rounded down, kind of. So if I were to take that away, here it's much smoother of a response. You can hear that better if you're listening through headphones, probably, or on a good sound system. Hopefully you're listening on a good pair of speakers or something. But yeah, let's like take that off. Not a huge difference. Um, especially when it's mixed in with a bunch of other things. Uh, but then the thing is I do this a lot throughout this whole thing. I, I do it with on the rims here, the same thing. Obviously that's a lot softer. But yeah, so the, it's a very extreme effect there. See, this is the compression curve I'm using on that. Let's see what instrument this is. Oh yeah, this is like a very old library that you can't really get anymore, um, which kind of sucks. This is by 9Volt Audio, I think the company was called. Um, really cool, fun sounding Tyco library. Um, so yeah, I started off with this beat. You know, I played around with other sort of traditional Japanese, I guess, uh, percussion instruments. Um, but I, I whittled it down to just those two that I felt like were doing the most work. Like I, I try to tend to trim the fat, you know, remove the things that aren't really contributing as much to the overall sound and just like whittle it down to what's absolutely core. Um, oh yeah, and then the, the other thing that I thought was core to this that, that I started off with was this China symbol. So that's like acting as the snare almost. And then here, you hear that quick cutoff again, right? Yeah, and then I, I do a lot of this kind of like stutter effects, or I like pepper it around in, in certain places with the China symbol and, and various other things. But this was another core thing that came out. Like this is this is the smash. This is the smash and the ball smashing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had if I would have to say like I was I think laying in bed if I can recall correctly, and this uh, this idea of like just these kind of three instruments here was the core thing that I latched onto. And then I, I knew I wanted it started off with just like a very big hard single note like a power chord basically um so we have this this bass and i guess i'll i don't know how i should go through this like just as i get to it or if i should go like track by track sort of because that's not necessarily the order of these tracks are in are not necessarily the order i added them in hmm. i don't know i tend to try to like group them together slightly sort of but yeah, I started off with this like pattern, right? So that's that's fun. Oh, thanks, train. So this, I believe, I'm gonna try to go into like how I did some of the sound design too. This one, I believe. Um, I'll have to admit, came from a preset, I think. Or it, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start from a preset and tweak it to my liking. And, and a lot of the time, if not most of the time, it ends up com sounding completely different. But in this case, like, I definitely... Uh, I wonder if I can do this. So I, here's what the, the, the synth sounds like right here. And clearly I, I started from this thing, this preset right here. Let's see if I can, hopefully I won't have to reload my project after I do this. Okay, so that's pretty, that's pretty different. Like, this is what the preset sounds like without any modifications. Although it might be, let's see. 
Okay, so like the pattern is still there, right? I, I definitely like lifted that decadent, 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 decadent. Not that it's that hard to come up with that particular thing. Let's see if I can undo this back to the original state. I'm probably not gonna be able to do this. Oh shit, okay. Oh, sorry. All right, I'm gonna have to reload this. Okay, I reloaded the entire project. Um, that was stupid. At next time, what I will do is, if I wanna show what the preset sounded like, I will clone the thing and then reset it, like the clone back to the original preset to, to show the difference and then just like copy the notes or something real quick. Um, FL Studio has gotten better about this with like undoing plugin states. I'm not sure how much it's actually able to do, like how much of that is its fault, because like the plugin would have to explode, expose that information. Anyway, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this plugin, Massive X, in this this song, and uh, it's just such a fun thing to use. It's and it's very, in my opinion, user friendly. Like you can automate any of these knobs with any of these controls down here, like a pattern. That's where that digadet, digadet, digadet. That's that's that thing right there, right? Or an an envelope that gets triggered every time a note gets triggered, or an LFO, which is just like a sweeping back and forth thing at some uh, rate that's either synced to the tempo or just free form and other things like that. And you can automate all this types, all this type of stuff here, like the reverb amount and the waveform and all sorts of stuff. So this is a really fun thing to to play around with. Um, so yeah, this, this bass harp here was definitely very inspiring. Like it's, I have to say a lot of the times when things go well in writing a song, it's largely to do with how the production comes out. Cause the production becomes very inspiring and it, it sort of tells you what to write next a lot of the time. Um, so I can't, can't take full credit for that, you know? So let's, let's keep going through the, uh, I feel like I'm taking too long here for the just and we're still in the first pattern of like 17 or something um yeah here's how i lay out the the different patterns by the way i'm i'm sort of old school you'll see a lot of screen recordings of fl studio people use this view the playlist view to lay out all of their their instruments on a separate row here but i do it sort of the i guess it's the old-fashioned way it's probably a dumb way but i i just i write these things as sort of patterns and I sort of string them together into a coherent song and, and glue them together a little bit. And I do it this way largely out of habit, but also because I like to sort of like move things around and like just experiment. How, how would this sound over here before this phrase? And what if, what if I move this here and how does that change the flow of the overall s song? And uh, if you do it the, the other way, it's just like a little bit harder to move everything around you'd have to take like a big vertical slice and move all that stuff around rather than just dragging one thing. I don't know. Obviously, it can be way more of a pain to do it this way too. Like there's definitely lots of copying and pasting I end up having to do. Um, but I don't know. Old habits die hard, I guess. Um, so yeah, back to pattern one still. We got a nice little sweep going on here. I'm assuming this is Mass X 2. Yep. And again, I believe this is like pretty heavily modified from a, a preset. Let's just clone it real quick and see like if I go here. If I like reload the raw preset. Eh, okay. That's pretty similar. It's got the same basic like high Q, uh, high res res filter sweep going on there, but I don't know. It worked out. Sometimes it, the preset is very close to what you really were looking for and what you need. And um, I have no shame in using a preset just wholesale if if it's exactly what I need. It doesn't usually happen that way, but you know if it does, I don't care. I just I want to make the best music I can. Um, let's take a listen to this one real quick. 
Okay, so that's why I was that's why I called it bass knock, I guess, because it has that sort of punchy feeling, right? I would I would typically call that like a, a bass knock, just subjectively. But then I I turned it into this. It's less of a punch and more of a, a patty kind of thing. And then let's get into the to the percussion a little bit. This was one of the first things I added too. Was this um, little. <laughs> just like little sprinkles of color. And you'll hear this this track throughout the whole song. Just like filling in little sprinkles. You could barely hear it really, but it adds some just textural qualities that I like. And um this is just making heavy use of of battery, you know, like battery is great for this kind of glitchy stuff, I think. It just has tons of this stuff, and you, it's really easy to customize, you know, replace ones that you don't like, increase the attack and stuff where you need to. Um, so that's that's fun. And then here's uh, here's the real balls that are being smashed, I would say, in my opinion. Very simple beat, obviously, you know. Um, we're layering three kicks together here, and these are all tweaked and balanced to my liking. I, this song, the composition of it didn't take too long, as it usually doesn't, honestly. I, I spent most of the time working on the production and like the mixing. That's, that's usually how it goes for me. I spend like 75% or more of the time on production. I really shouldn't. It's, there's point of diminishing returns but in this case I actually had a lot of fun with it um, I think this piece took me like I'm embarrassed to say but I think this took me like 40 hours um, you know what this you know it takes a big man to to reveal this right here this I'm gonna no filter this is 50 hours damn okay yeah that's too much <laughs> but again probably like 30 of those were spent like at the end just tweaking the, the mixing endlessly which you should really not do you gotta learn to walk away um, I'm really bad at doing that though anyway um, yeah industrial kit again I just knew I wanted something really hard and aggressive and um, paired with this China symbol like the the, the the timbre or the timber whatever of the China symbol to me has always been so cool. It's so harsh and, and chaotic. And it that came to me instantly for this this piece. So it sounds like just a little less punchy without it. I hope this is not clipping the the recorded audio. Oh crap. I was reducing this on the master channel, but I forgot to redo that when I was uh, when I reopened the project. Oh well, you're gonna get what you're gonna get. I can't record this over again. Uh, and here's an alarm. Again, this is Massive X. This was just something like I don't know. Uh oh, danger. Your balls are about to get smashed. Look out. Um, yet another Massive X thing here. So, repeated ostinato, as I very often like to do. Right. Um, but it does have this sort of... A single note has that fifth, fifthy kind of sound here. I don't know, I can't remember which part of this synth is causing that fifthy kind of sound, but it's there. Uh, it's probably like the harmonics in this this wavetable sample or something. Um, but yeah, so in this piece I, I do remember going sort of pattern by pattern. And uh, so this this pattern sort of fully came into to play 
right away before I even moved in onto other things with the exception of some things like the guitar, which I personally really like the sound that I got for this one. Very punk, grungy kind of, uh, I've never done a guitar sound like this before. It's very harsh. Tinny, a little brittle. Um, so we got, let's see what we got here in the signal chain. Oof. So that's just the regular amp, right? Um, again, apologies on like the order, the stacking order of the windows is going to be all messed up this whole time. We are doing a little guitar rig thing here. Uh, typical trick I do is two different amps and hard panned right and left. Um, find that gives it a, a nice full stereo sound. And then I played around a lot with these new uh, contact or complete effects here. Dirt and um, I already forget the other ones, so we'll, we'll get to them in a little bit. So that's just like a regular guitar amp sound, but then this part I think adds a little spice to it, a little sauce. Right? Calling that the talk. So clearly some kind of wah formant filter thingy going on there with a little bit of panning. Uh, yeah, I remember like messing with this a lot. Um, all in good fun. You know, it's, you can lose a lot of time. You go down a rabbit hole, just putzing with these things. Right. But it's, it's in this case, I think it was actually worth, worth the effort. And it was like a worthwhile expenditure of my time. And then just like a little reverb at the end, apply to both of those things. Coolio. All right, first pattern town. Oh, crash, I guess. There's, what else is there? Nothing on this pattern. We'll, we'll start going faster, I promise. That's, that's like a general overview of the, the instruments to uh, front load it at the beginning of the video here. Okay, so we got what do we got here? We got some rims. It's almost like a cadence thing. Uh, I'm a percussionist by trade. Like I kind of only dabble in piano and a, and a couple of other things, but I I mostly did percussion in, in like school and I'm just mainly a percussionist. I did a lot of drumline too, so I think you'll hear some influences there. This sounds like a drumline cadence almost. I actually wasn't cognizant of that until this very moment. Um, and here we got some more of this little... Little trinkety uh, syncopated stuff that just adds a little flavor to it. Like if we didn't have that just sounds empty. Um, we got this ostinato pattern again, which I think is based on the... Oh, lordy. Uh, apologies. Yeah, this is like very similar to the, the pick ostinato that I showed in the previous pattern, except it's just a little bit altered to fit the, the chord progression that I wanted here. And yeah, I just, I knew I wanted like a break in the action, sort of like a, uh, an inhale before the explosion. And this is what this phrase is here, right before we get to actually smash in some balls. This is like the, oh, here it comes, um, that kind of build up. So it's, you know, we drop the bass out, we drop a lot of the, the lower percussion, the harder percussion out, and we're just frenetic we get that little stutter action going on there and then again with the sort of drumline influence at the end of this phrase here to really 
get us on the on ramp into the the full energy of the song. We have this little six tuplet roll. Let's put that in context of yeah. And then we got the guitar coming in there. Yeah, that's how it goes. That's the sound the guitar makes. Yeah, and this this dirty kit here also has a lot of those like little, not just the little clicks and and trinkets, but also the longer sound design -y effects that I use for reverses and, and transitions. It really smooths, smooths the transitions between these sections a lot. And then here we go. Um, this is right into it. This, this riff, I'm, I, I really like a lot actually. And that's, that's rare for me to, to say about one of my own pieces, but like, I enjoy listening to it and, um, didn't, didn't spend any time at all on this really. It's just, the first thing that came to mind, I didn't didn't doubt myself, I guess, and uh, that was the nice thing about this piece. A, a lot of the times, it's like pulling teeth trying to write a piece of music. I'm overthinking it, and I'm focused too much on small details. With this one, I mean, I had the luxury because I wasn't writing it for anything. Um, it could be whatever I wanted it to be, and uh, yeah, I just I just threw shit in. You know, I didn't care. Just throw it in. Just do whatever. Um, don't overthink it. But yeah, this this melody, this chord progression here just sort of just came out. And I know that's not very helpful if you're watching this for educational reasons, or and it's probably not interesting to hear either if you're just watching it for entertainment. But yeah, you know, with with all the groundwork that was laid with all the instrumentation and stuff in the and the setup leading up to this, this sort of just popped out. And that's sort of the best feeling when it just pops out and you don't have to, it just sounds right and you just move on immediately. But um, let's, let's take a listen, shall we? Take it a step by step. So you get that very punky, gritty guitar. And then when you layer it with this, I, I really like the sound of that layered with the guitar. If you don't have that, it sounds not as cool in my opinion. It's like okay, it's still fine, but I really like that It's very unrelenting this this song. A lot of sixteenth notes. It just never ends. Um and then I think with this pattern that that riff came first and then I filled in this kind of Again, simple just kick and snare. And then of course we have this other layer here. Again, with the little clicks that sort of function as hi-hats along with the rims. And then we got the Tycho's accenting, you know, the notes as appropriate. Ah, okay, here we go. So this is uh, the Pixies. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking at this point. I guess it was just, hey, what if we threw the the do 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 if if you've played uh, Mario Sunshine on the the GameCube, and if if you remember the, I guess the secret cave levels where you would go and it, you'd be like in in a, a space world and you're on some floating blocks that you have to traverse. If you remember that? Well, they have these, uh, these poppy, silly do sounds. So it's like, yeah, that, that would be funny, right? That would kind of be funny. And maybe you can sort of hear it here. So, 
again, with most of these things, this is several layers in one. And I'm going to, I don't remember exactly what this was. Uh, so this is Omnisphere. I still love using this. It's even though it's, I guess, kind of old at this point, but um, man, it's just so easy to use. And they have so much, so many interesting samples that you can use with it. Let me try to solo. First of all, there's a lot of like some kind of guitar amp on here, right? Clearly. Yeah, there you go. So that's what it, um, I've muted several things though. So here's one layer. And that layer I really liked adding because it just gives it a little bit of that attack, that punch. So together. And then, so that's two out of, I guess, four layers. Actually, now I'm not sure if this, was this, did I unmute this? I can't even remember now. Man, my memory is so bad. Apologies. I'm not sure that was unmuted to begin with. I think that might have been like well, as I was experimenting. Let's see if this sounds right if I put the amp back on. Yeah, that wasn't in there. Okay. So again, you know, I, ex I experiment with like layering all this stuff in there, seeing what interesting sounds I can get to pop out. Um, but then at the end of it, I usually try to go back and reduce it to just what is essential. And in this case, it was just these two layers here, the the binks and the the do's. And then, as you heard, like running it through that. I'm doing some ridiculous, like heavy compression here. Ah, freak, that's, that's what it was called. I think I, I've made use of freak several times in this, in this song. And it's just a, like a very special type of compression. Like I, I won't pretend to know exactly how all of these plugins work exactly, but you sort of get the feel of it as you tweak the different knobs. Like you, you get the, the the sense of what it's doing behind the scenes. Like oh, this is it's applying compression, but only at, on the attack. It's like applying saturation, but only on the on the release with this amount of contour or something like that. Um, and yeah, you just end up with weird stuff like this. And that melody, again, is... It's so silly and kind of stupid, but I, I kind of really like it. Um, because, again, it was just... This was the first thing I thought of. I did not question it. I just wrote it down. I was like, hey, that's kind of funny. And I, I left it in, and somehow... I think it, it works. And I guess I'm layering it in with that, but otherwise these two patterns are the same here. Um, and you have this picking going on still, right? To keep the momentum rolling. So this, the Pixies sound here, this, that's to represent the clown that comes out and smashes the balls. Um, not any balls in particular, just uh, balls. You know, this is the, the 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 person, the ethos behind the the ball smasher, that the one who smashes, right? So that's that's that. And you can hear we have these little. Yeah, I can't really take credit for any of those samples, but I'm I'm layering them in there uh, as I see fit, and there's tons to choose from. I love battery for that kind of stuff. It's it's such a fun, such a fun plugin. different no it's not okay and then we go into this part which i think is my favorite part of the song for some reason to me this just sounds like a factory 
or something. This is the Ball Smasher factory that you were, we're entering now. So if you imagine, if you ever played any of those Rhythm Heaven games, um, I think Rhythm Heaven Fever has one that's called like the Screwbot Factory or something like that. And it's sort of, so for, I mean, first thing to note is the general feel of this section is in halftime, right? So we're going like from uh, a, a kick and snare beat of into a halftime feel of where the snare is um, hitting half half as frequently, basically, is the simplest way to explain it, I guess. And, um, yeah, I just imagine, like, uh, the balls being smashed in uh, in synchronous fashion to, going down the factory conveyor belt to this, this section here. And here we have that same taiko rhythm from the beginning, possibly like a little bit of variation, I can't remember. And now I'm introducing new samples here down at the bottom in this dirty kit. Obviously like very metallic industrial sounding. So that's probably why it sounds like a factory to me. And then, yeah, again, I hate to put it so simply, but this sort of just came, you know, this section came to me. So that bass line isn't super, like, original on its own. You know, you're going to semitone up and then... That's obviously a very common thing. But then what I what really makes this section here interesting to me is this EPNO part. So what's going on there is um well chord wise it's I kind of like it. It's 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 funky to me. You got like a little sixth sixth chord that you were starting off with there and uh, some interesting stuff. But the production of it, you can sort of hear that the reverb is growing, um, but then it abruptly cuts off. Again, this is sort of in line with the theme that I was talking about earlier of like this being a sampled sounding song where there's like lots of harsh cutoffs. And uh, again, Massive X here had a lot of fun with this. And uh, I made sure that the the reverb is increasing as the the sustained note continues. So I can basically I can control when it resets back down to zero reverb, and it, it'll slowly like if I just hold down a note, you can hear the reverb increases, right? But then as soon as I let go, harsh cut off, right? And then if I'm holding a note in the bass, but I'm playing staccato notes up at the the top, it's still gonna keep that reverb going. Right? Um, so as long as one note is held, it's it's increasing that, that reverb. But then when all the notes stop, like right here, that's when the reverb cuts off. And it's just, I don't know, it, it, it creates this weird... Like if I just made all of this legato and extended them out. Or made them all staccato, which I can't really do very quickly. See that like gets a lot of the way there. Let's try to shorten this a little bit. So that gets a lot of the feeling that I was aiming for, but then compare that to this. Whoops. Let's 
the reverb is kind of refracting like mirrors or something. It's a weird, weird like ramping up repeatedly kaleidoscopy kind of effect. Um, that's what I really like about this this section there. Oh, and then we have the the clown smashers again, except in the bass. And I think that's just the same thing as this one, except uh, octave down, maybe some different effects or something. I'm not going to go into that. That's probably not as interesting. Ah, the timpani. Ah, the French. So this this is where the timpani first makes its appearance. And again, this was just where I was like, eh, yeah, fuck it. Let's throw a timpani in. Let's just, who cares? Yeah, that sound, that, that'll be interesting, right? Um... And again, you're going to see here, this is a, uh, geez, I forget what library, I think this is from Orchestral Tools, just a single timpani, but um, it's modified in the like contact settings to have that very sharp release. Like, a, a real timpani player probably, I think theoretically you could play that. But just it wouldn't be that sharp. Like you would hear some reverb, you would hear some release. But this is clearly like it sounds edited in post digitally with a very sharp cutoff. And obviously very high intensity, max volume, max velocity here. And uh, I, I cut out the pixies for that little to, to make room for it. Um, guess I don't cut out you can sort of see here where I cut out the hole to make room for that a little bit um, I mean if you haven't picked up on it by now but like these are the layers of the instruments and these are the notes and time moves from left to right and uh, up and down and each track is is pitches and in the case of percussion stuff it's sort of just arbitrary where the the vendor the third party decided to map the the pitches to what like percussion notes so yeah I, I i do that a lot i'm like syncopating and muting things here and cutting things off to make room for other things to pop in it's very like patchwork it's weird and i've already been talking way too long this is this is unbelievable um i don't know i don't know what i'm doing if you're still here god bless you um get a life anyway Let's see anything else to Ah yes, fight. Yeah, so this I I composited this together and pre-rendered it down to a single sample and I think it was a combination of red room audio stomps and claps and maybe some yells from that Tycho library I was talking about before, the um, 9 volt audio, true Tycho's or whatever it's called, and um, layered them together into this, which if we turn the effects off, sounds like that, you can hear like the stop going on in there bunch of people stomping an auditorium room floor and then turn the effects on compress it to hell give it a little bit of saturation in there I think sounds like maybe not I don't know it's just so compressed that it's yeah so yeah very gritty and grimy this track for good reason, I think. All right, and then we move into this part. Holy crap. Um, yet again, I just threw, I, I was like looking through my sample folder. I was like, oh, that's a, that's a sample of Getty Lee singing Tom Sawyer, a section from Tom Sawyer, uh, a song by Rush. And it's the isolated vocals. Eh, fuck it, throw it in. So I, I I looped it to have that infinite phrasing there with some crossfading, 
and some like stretching to get the tempo and stuff to work out and everything, a bunch of adjustments, some reverb. And then I made this monstrosity, which doesn't show the full picture because like one, if I just hold down one note here, well, it's a little bit lower. There's like three distinct notes going on there, just when you're holding down one note. Um, so I had to do all these weird, like figuring out where the pitch bends should go to get it into the scale that I was looking for. Um, and yeah, the result is is this. Uh, I'll play the full section first. <laughs> So this is where you start to sort of enjoy the ball smashing. Um, it's very uplifting and uh, you're starting to come to terms with it. And yeah, I just started with this chord progression, I think. Like I demoed out that chord progression, I see how it flowed from the, the previous section and it, it felt like it worked to me. Layered in some bass just for good measure. And then from there, I believe I figured out the rhythm that would go underneath that because this is a very weird rhythmic shift. It sounds like a rhythmic shift. Um, because again, remember, we're coming from and then we're going into this, like, what the hell is this? But it's it's just this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then under that, I'm sort of layering this rhythmic offsets that sort of sounds like a polyrhythm. And the, I think the first time you hear this pattern, you're kind of like a little bit thrown off by it. It's like, where's, where's the beat? How is this? Is this still in the same tempo? Did we change tempos? <laughs> Did we change time signatures or what? What the hell happened? Um, but then by the time you get to the next pattern, which is almost the same, except that there's a an anchor here now with the beat. The beat anchors you to the. It's like oh no, the rhythm, the time signature hasn't changed, the tempo hasn't changed. It's just like a reframing of it. <laughs> So just the simple fact of this kick and snare helps us contextualize that rhythm. Right, so without it. Oh, it just sort of sounds freeform, but with it, it helps us hear the metronome in the back, kind of. You can't really hear that. It's, it's mixed too low. Anyway, so yeah, I think I figured out the chord progression here first, then the rhythm, and uh, I swear I'm going to limit this to an hour. There's no way I should be going talking longer than this about a single song. This is ridiculous. Um, but I do want to. So I I do want to point out that yeah, I came with this the chord progression first, then the rhythm, and then I believe the Getty thing came along mirroring the the chord progression that's that's your getty lee alien choir now if i take out all these pitch bends you'll see it doesn't sound quite right more discordant doesn't fit as much in the chord progression that it's supposed to fit in. 
Anyway. And then, yeah, we repeat the same section, just recontextualizing it with that beat. And then there's some extra stuff thrown in here, like a choir. And that is just east-west uh, symphonic choirs, I think. And that's me doing my best to sound out the syllables, the world is, the world is, in this word building software. So this is me trying to phonetically spell that out. And uh, as you can hear, it doesn't sound too great when it's heard in isolation. <laughs> But you know what, if you take it out and just make it plain ahs or oohs or ees or something, it just doesn't sound quite right. It, it conflicts with what Getty Alien Choir is singing. Um, so was, I found it was better to just sort of match the syllables roughly, even though you would never want to listen to that on its own. Um, and then we have this nice little... Arpeggios. Which you can kind of barely hear. Anyway, and here's some of that chopping that I've I like to do in this song. So there's a bunch of stuff going on there. So just and then what we got here pretty simple just like drop the bass out and drums out interlude with your funky Splatoon like guitar, I guess. By the way, I've I've only played Splatoon. I just realized that I think people might think that I lifted this from Splatoon or something. I just want to say I've only played Splatoon like a couple of times. I have heard the music. I can't say I'm like I wasn't at all influenced by it, but um, crappy. I guess they do use guitars like that, and I think they do use timpanis. Um, but really, the timpani in this case just came from the the smashing idea. And uh, so that's like not something a real timpani player could play. I mean, for one, it jumps around too many pitches. You would need to have like 20 different kettle drums to support that. Um, but this, this really reminds me of some of my favorite game soundtracks from a kid, like for, on the N64, uh, Star Fox 64, for example, had a soundtrack where they play they had a, a synthetic timpani that sort of played very melodically as if it were being played on a keyboard so it wouldn't really be playable in real life but i don't know it creates a certain sound um so maybe i was influenced by that uh anyway That's that's a little fun. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's a little off beat there, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and then here we go into almost we're almost done. The, almost the final parts here. Again, we're interspersing that little timpani as like, almost like pepper, little hits of peppercorn flakes in your cereal. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I have too much to say about this section. It's just like a silly little chord progression that's that's fun that I came up with. And then we're mirroring that on the guitar and the bass. Pixies again, and then we reprise, reprise this uh, clown smasher melody here while layering in all this other stuff. So this is almost the same as the last pattern here, but there's a little bit of a difference if I go back and forth, right? On the second time around, we have this denouement kind of. And that leads into the next section, which we'll get to in a second. Ah, yeah, and this is just uh, a call back to the beginning of the song. Um, where the pick instrument plays this, except it's just an octave down, I think. Very buried in the mix. You can barely hear it, but it, it adds some urgency to it and finality to it, I think. And Getty joining the Clown Smashers there and the choir. Ugh. And uh, so yeah, get almost getting to the end here. And we have this little chromatic movement downward to, to transition us nicely and smoothly into the next section. If I can play it in song mode so it actually goes to the next section instead of looping. And then that instrument doesn't play in the next section anyway. <laughs> yeah. See, it's a little hard to see like the chromatic movement here, but now you can sort of see it this way. That's like the whole, all of the notes at once you're seeing there in this pattern. So it moves chromatically down to that. And uh, this, this was the section, this last section here was I I think I had a bunch of sketches at the end. Um, here you can let's let's go through some of the discarded stuff, shall we? Oh, that's not discarded. Oh, did I keep any of the discarded? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll just. I'll come up with a bunch of ideas, like riffs or variations, and I'll put them in separate patterns. It's just like little sketches that I can maybe incorporate later, and I'll put them all the way down here at the end to to signify to myself, like, yeah, these are kind of scrap. Maybe we'll incorporate them into the main song. Maybe they'll just forever live in this project file, right? Um, and this last uh, pattern, pattern 11 here, was one that like it didn't come in order. This was sort of like a sketch. It's like I knew I want to have something like this where there's a bunch of chromatic movement. Um... I want to like chromatic movement like that split apart a little bit in the intervals by fourths or maybe fifths. I knew I wanted that general kind of sound. And that, that upward movement is just, it sounds so silly there, which is totally what I was going for. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> Thought I was about to lose an hour of work there. Burn in hell, okay.
Oh yeah, and then I'm I'm like, did you hear that little chicka to chet? Chicka to chaya. I was like wondering why that's in there, and then I remembered. It's this like weird. It's switching into triplets there all of a sudden, and it's it's designed to mesh with that. Again, little things you, you're not gonna notice, but if they're if they're not aligned, it'll just be a little bit too discordant or something. It'll it'll stick out. Oh yes, and then my favorite instrument, except possibly the clown smashers, is um, silly triangle, which is just a sample of a triangle with some pitch modulation. That goes like this basically so when you hold down the note it just modulates the pitch up and down like in a little wavy fashion and um i, I always think of ocarina of time legend of zelda on, on the n64 and other n64 games when i hear this effect because i feel like they did this quite a bit when you were underwater or hurt by an enemy, I think sometimes they would play your links uh, like ah sound effect with this kind of modulation, You'd be to signify that you were underwater. Uh, great effect. Um, and then yeah, dropping out the whole thing just for that to expose that triangle. That was certainly a choice. <laughs> I think that's sort of just kind of stolen almost from uh, the end of Candied Overture, maybe, or like concert band pieces where <laughs> at the end you would just have like a little like dig 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 ding, bah. a little button at the end like that. Um, so in a sense, that's sort of lifted from that. So that's nice. Again, you have that very cut off feeling. Let's let's see what that sounds like. See, I made that legato there. I extended the notes, and it just doesn't sound quite as good. Let's undo that. Ba 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 ba. It's staccato. It's staccato. I'm just following the chromatic motion there. And I don't know, I think it's fun to switch to triplets there right at the very end again out of the 16th notes just to sort of, we're swinging back to the, it's like Tarzan swinging back around the, the, the tree trunk, back to the beginning. There's your triplets. And I think every instrument, maybe not every instrument, but the percussion at least. Oh, but not the pick. So we have 16th notes overlaid, 8th note triplets there. Interesting. And then, yeah, just loops right back, back to the beginning. However, um, this has already been so long, but I only have one other thing to, to talk about, which is uh, on the second loop around, instead of going back into, let's see, this part... We don't get to hear that again, very sadly. Instead, uh, we have like a slightly different transition after the factory part. Let's examine that little transition here real quick.
very similar to the other transition, just things like rearranged and put onto different instruments and shifted around just to make it sound a little different. And then finally this part, this is the euphoria section where you are finally, you are in heaven of smashing balls and pretty simple chord progression here. And it's so annoying to do stuff with just one window. It's really slowing me down. Same instrument here that I was like talking about controlling the reverb with before. Just held out. And then it's slightly different on the second. And yeah, we have Getty in the Triangle, <laughs> Getty in the Silly Triangles, uh, which was the name of my band in kindergarten. And again, we're keeping the rhythm going here with that China acting as the snare. One, two, three, four. And, you know, this, this arpeggio is sort of just following the chord structure, more or less of the, the sustained chords underneath, as you would expect. Uh, and then we have a fun little triplet overlay pattern here. So we put the metronome on under that. So that's like a, a f always a fun polyrhythm. Oh yeah, and this you can barely hear, but this is a speak and spell. It's like an old children's toy. Smash. Smash. And uh, you will hear that at the very end of the song as well, if you've heard it before, if you're still listening. And again, I'm sort of cutting out there to make room for the, the smash to hopefully let the listener hear it at least once clearly. Uh, again, some just fun triplet rhythms there. And then this is like technically the final unique pattern of the song, um, but it's not like the last one that plays just because of the way I've arranged the song because we go back to one of the older patterns after it. Again, you can see there, I'm, I'm overlapping some of these notes to ex keep that reverb going. This, this is that same instrument again. So if I just make them legato and, and don't let them overlap at all. But with this, I'm controlling the contour of the reverb and making it sort of go up like that and waves, so I'm, I'm controlling it explicitly with the, the overlap of the notes. And yeah, this is sort of just like, hopefully meant to feel like a wrapping up, we're coming to an end pattern here. We had a, 
a stuck note there somewhere. I don't know if you heard that. Whatever. And then this this part was always fun to me. Just that little repeat of the bass. I think this is a repeat of an earlier, yes, it's a repeat of, um, it's a repeat of that, but in bass form, and it's mirrored across the, the bass arp, the bass knock, the guitar, and the timpani, which makes it sound like this. And you really need the timpani in there. Again, you really need that sharp cutoff too, I think, for it to have the right effect. I really wish FL Studio, when I, I click on the piano roll to go to this timpani part, it would just automatically, okay, well, it did it that time because I was already focused on it, but I really wish it would just automatically focus, like fit the notes to view or something. I'm sure there is a way to do that somehow, anyway. Again, if I make those, Legato, fill in the gaps. It's like, eh. Increases the separation of them. I don't know, it's just a different vibe. And then, yeah, we just repeat some of the other sections that we've already heard before. And then we finally end with... Yay! And I mute everything else. Yeah, I give it a hard mute to cut off any reverb and things like that. And then end with that balls spoken by the speak and spell. And I had to. So the the speak and spell couldn't necessarily speak arbitrary things. I don't think like it didn't. It wasn't like text to speech is today where you can string together any string of phonemes that you want. So in other words, I had to I had to cut this together. They didn't have they didn't have a pre-built word saying smash or balls. So I had to like go through, I had to look at the internet archive and get like an old uh, website that emulated it and had all the samples and download them and stitch them together like I, I got the the b from one and then I got the all and then this from those are like three separate clips that I had to string together um so yeah this is a uh, way too long if you're still here I don't know why you are if I'm being completely honest um I don't, I'm not exactly sure why I did this. I, I guess I, I thought it was a fun piece. It was certainly a unique one for me. And um, I hope you learned something or got something out of it, or maybe you just have it on as you're sleeping. Uh, that, that would also be a weird choice. Um, but if you're still here, thanks, thanks for watching. And again, the stems are available if you want to, again, it's not as fine of a breakdown as it I've done here um, but most of the details are there um, you won't see the effect I didn't really go through the effects too much I guess but that's okay it's mostly just like compression EQ and guitar rig like a lot of uh, a lot of compression and distortion and stuff okay bye